We made it on time. I saw you in the comments saying that you'd have to drink twice if uh, we were late. Well, we're early. So. My iPad says 9 o'clock, and everyone knows the Apple clock is the official. Oh, yeah, maybe we're right on time. So I tried to be early, and I couldn't even pull it off. This is the first live critique the community we've done at this hour. Normally, people tuning in are used to the coronavirus journals. That's true. And the, the critique people are going to be angry about this, and the coronavirus journal people are going to be angry about this. No, no one tonight. will be yeah. pleased with this. My specialty. Um, all right, so this critique is on aviation photography. Aviation aerials. So it can be photos taken from the air, or it can be photos of aviation. So oh, it's so kind of... pretty vague. Um, the next critique... <laughs> what did we decide on that one? We're going to be doing black and white landscapes. Oh, and my God. what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to do a, an update to the Ansel Adams video where one of us is going to pick half the images from the critique and then mix them in with maybe Ansel Adams is that's too easy maybe you mix it in with other super famous Nicolai black and white Bacardi. like real super famous like landscape, legitimate photographers like ones that have sold for tons of money you know what I mean and <laughs> then we can well, Malaya doesn't really do black and whites yeah, and yeah we have really to find somebody, black, and then yeah, it'll be yeah. like, do you re do you recognize the the valuable black and white images? Yeah, um, and the next critique also, uh, Boris FX is going to be donating uh, their software to one of the winners, or we'll just choose somebody it's randomly. Boris Optics, it's their new editing suite for. And how much does it cost? It's super expensive, right? I don't think optics is. Okay. I don't know offhand, but Boris effects for video, it's like thousands of dollars. So I okay. think optics could be like eighty nine or hundred and fifty bucks. Somewhere. Okay. Okay. Well, one person will get that. Another one will get the F stoppers tutorial. Let's get down to business. Is this the first shot? We have eleven images. How do you want to do, Mike? You want to pick two random numbers, one through eleven? To get a free tutorial? Or do you want to just pick at the end like pick we did last Pick at the time? end, because we never remember end. what number we're yeah. on. Let right. Mike pick at the end. Well, this is the highest rated image. We always show the highest rated image first. And as you can see, aerial aviation, this is clearly a shot from, cool. from the sky, not a shot of aviation itself. Okay. This location is in so many pictures. Like, I've seen every angle. I haven't seen this angle yet, which is unique, but I've seen this uh, Slovenia. Where, where is Slovenia? Mr. World Atlas over there, where? It's uh, south of Estonia from last night in Transio. Okay, that's... But uh, it's down, I want to say, northeastern Mediterranean. It might be landlocked, it might not, but it's in that corner, corner there, around... So above Turkey. North of, northeast of Greece, I think. Okay. Or east of Greece. Thank you, Pace. Shout out to Pace Collett. He says, thank you, Mike, you're the man, and you're very talented. More talented than Lee. Okay. All right. Are we ready to rate this? Three, two, one. Uh, like, I'm in between a four and a five on this. This might yeah. be five. I, I mean, this looks amazing, perfect. I don't, I don't really have any critique for this. This is one of those shots that I can imagine printed on, uh, it's not plexi, but it's the acrylic front. Encapsulation. Encapsulated yeah. image, kind of like the Peter Lick. I know you've encapsulated your work. Um, and then you light it really well. It just I could see this just jumping off of someone's living room. The colors in this, especially the yellows and greens, looks really, really awesome to me. And the smoke and everything, the, the cloud cover. My only... The thing I don't like about this. Oh boy, here we go. Do not ruin this critique. It looks like a 500 pixels picture. There's awesome photos on that website. Uh, <laughs> is 500 pixels now a model mayhem? They, are, do, just, are people like, this looks like an F-stopper like, picture. It's technically incredible. The composition is great. There's nothing blown out. There's nothing in blackness. But I don't feel any sort of excitement I mean, I'm, it's a great technical achievement, but I am not excited looking at it. It's like, it's like, it's like a photorealistic painting. Then the technicalities of it are incredible, but I don't, get a, I don't have like an emotional response so to it. So what's wrong with it? 
That's all. And what I do said, you attribute that to? I said to? it's a four. I feel like it's just it's it checks all the boxes that internet photographers want to see checked. Okay, but what is it missing to make it world class? I don't know. That's why I said I'm like between four and five, and that's the only thing. Everything else about it is amazing. The color, the composition, the this, that. So I just feel like it lacks emotional. It sounds like you're being rough, but you're still giving it four stars. I'm still giving it a great. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like better than most good, of the stuff in your own portfolio. Someone who is this good can take it, you know, um, take the critique because they know that they're good and they know this is a damn good photo. Well, that somebody is Alexander Lauterbach. Lauterbach. I wish he let us know what he shot this on. It looks awesome. You might have to read these because Mike left his desk chair a little oh, too right forward and I can't. Okay, next up. There's no behind the scenes of this? He just says he took it a beautiful area in Slovenia? Yeah, exactly. All right, next image. What's going on here? Is this... Uh, Combustion? Or? Is this supposed to be on fire? That, yeah, that that's I think that's the uh, the startup sequence for this plane. Really? You can tell it's real. I mean, you can't always tell it's real. Who knows with Photoshop? That looks pretty days. legit. That's, that's the real deal. But if you zoom deal. in here, you see all of the uh, heat waves and yeah, stars and like everything. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Interesting. Are we ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one. I'm going five on this wow. one. Wow. Three on this. I'm the odd man out. So when I compare this to the last one, I still have to think I, I prefer the last one to this by a lot. But you like this more. I think this captures a more interesting moment. It, uh, immediately, all of us were like, what is going on here? Okay. Whereas the last one is like, oh, pretty landscape. But so this one is like, So the what? church needs to be on fire in the last shot. <laughs> it needs to be spitting flames. Yes. But I think this is great. I think they know their subject. They have to know what to look for and when. You don't just spin around and instantly see it spitting out fire. That's a very quick moment to happen. Um, and I think the composition is really cool. I like the smoke. I like the heat waves. Given that it is aviation photography, I would say this should be in any aviation photographer's portfolio. Graham... Taylor shot this, and uh, he says this is an image of a Spitfire TE-311, and he says, by the final display, this meant the engine slash exhaust were nice and hot. The Merlin is fundamentally not much different than a car engine, so I knew that this temperature could likely lead to flames as the engine was primed and started. Unburnt fuel being burned in the exhaust, the ambient light levels with the setting sun, would make the perfect opportunity to capture a nice, even exposure in one frame. Like, like how, how well the guy knows his, his facts. That is and true. true. Yeah, I'm if not about to critique that after you reading all of that. If, if he really thought that, or was he just at the event spraying and praying and taking well, shots? Well, I like what he day. says about hiding all of the plane spotters, because I can't stand when there's like aviation photography, but then there's a million people in the background like all gawking at the 747 yeah. or whatever. Is the prop moving at this point or not yet? And I if it is moving or I could be moving... I would assume it's just idling slowly, you know? Do you want any slight motion, or do you like that it's... It almost... It looks like there's some motion blur on it on the edge. I'm of just it, thinking if, like, I guess maybe if you have too much motion, you now have the flame with less definition because the props got yeah, the movement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like the definition of the flame for sure. So why do you say it's only three stars, Patrick? It needs work. What, what, what's going? No, 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 no. no. Two needs work. Oh, two three, three is, is a solid, solid image. Solid. I just, I, I, I don't know if it's the sky or if it's the composition of the plane. It's a great shot. It's cool. It's unique. You don't see a frame like this often. I just don't know that I, I see this printed on a wall huge and be like, that is the showstopper. Well, Patrick, let me tell you how wrong you are. <laughs> this image was part of a portfolio of four that earned me the coveted title of RAF Photographer of the Year. It was displayed in an exhibition of my imagery at RAF Museum in Hendon. <sighs> Which was extended by six months. I'm an it idiot. It was featured in I'm Sky, an idiot. the garden. I'm, I suck. What did the community give this? 3.5? Yeah, 3.5. Top so, community. 
Well, here's the thing. The community is tougher than usually we are, and the fact that I gave it a three kind of shows how far out of line yeah, you're way out I of really line. am. Next up. Next image. Here we have some planes in flight. Man. You know how... I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what plane, but in New Zealand, you can pay to take up one of these. They're not, I mean, these aren't jets, but these are like fighter airplanes. Well, what are these called? What, I mean, what these is like, like a war, genre? Warbirds, I guess, would be the technical. Okay, but there's got to be like a more generic term for overall like stunt planes that Piston were once engine. used in yeah. war. But you can pay to take these up in New Zealand and they will let you fly and you can do whatever you want and the pilot will just recover for you in theory. <laughs> and I was I was all about it when we were there but it just never really worked out. I didn't even hear about this. This was an option? Yeah, this was an option. Now Mike, you flew a plane in New Zealand, right? Wasn't there something you did where you got to oh, be in I, a I got the jump seat between Auckland and Queenstown in an Air New Zealand A320 which was like one of the greatest experiences How did of my you do life. that? Pull a few strings here and there. Did Being you? the airport photographer extraordinaire comes oh. in handy every now and then. So you were sitting in the cockpit in that little uncomfortable seat? In the little jump seat, yeah. And was it super uncomfortable, it was, though? No. It was absolutely incredible. It was a... Um, it was, like, I don't know. It, I was having so much fun. You could have had me sit on a pole, and I would have enjoyed it. Hmm. It was awesome. It was... And there was no bureaucracy or there anything was, but, that you had to deal with? Or but you... I, I was doing a photograph for the uh, Auckland airport, and I knew a pilot for Air New Zealand, and they both vouched for me, and they said, he's not a threat. Oh, and yeah. And I flew with two... Uh, I've never met the pilots before, but they were great. They were awesome dudes, and they were explaining everything and were chatting it up, and just one of the coolest experiences of my life. And it was and, and like... You don't understand how fast you're going in an A320 until you're sitting oh. in the cockpit. And, oh, so cool. That Taking off. Cool. And it's like... <laughs> 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 All right, let's rate this. Make it big. Uh, I want to look at it. There we go. Here it is big. Three, two, one... I see, I'm kind of in between a two and a three on I'm this. I'm in between you're the in three and the four. Go first, Mike. Um, I think the the crooked horizon hurts. That's an easy fix. I like the prop blur. Maybe some aviation photographers are really retentive about getting that full circle of a prop blur. I just think the, the thing that holds us back is mostly the time of day. If this was shot like in a golden light or something. But I also, I do know how difficult, sorry, I know how difficult it is to get not only the access, but to get a shot like this where you have two planes perfectly lined up. It could be separated separated a little bit more. But, I mean, the fundamentals are all there. I just got to tidy up some things. When you say it's an easy fix for the horizon, are you talking about just cloning the left side up? No, just shoot a little wider. and. Okay, you know. but you couldn't do that with this particular frame. No, but I'm sure there is a a wider frame of this where you get a little more breathing room around and you can straighten it out easier. Yeah, it's hard for me to like give this a three because, like you just said, everything lines up so well. The access, the situation, I mean, I assume they're in a third plane that's like right by these other two. Like it's a really cool situation, but it just kind of seems like snapshotty to me. It's like the depth of field is huge. I don't think it needs to be super shallow depth of field or anything, but. It's the light, the middle of the day. You got these guys who look like amateurs in the back seat, like looking at you. It, yeah. And well, it also looks like this is more of a, a, a personal thing. It's like his friend in the back seat. So, yeah, if that's you, this is the greatest Facebook image you've <laughs> ever got of yourself. You know, yeah. somebody's taken of you. But I don't know. It, it's cool if you're into, if you're a super geek when it comes to aviation and everything. Like, this is a shot you're going to have. It's awesome. But in terms of it being like, the highest end of aviation photography. I feel like it lacks a little. <laughs> um, do you have something to say? No, someone's just giving me a hard time as usual. No, that can't be. So, yeah, I, I kind of agree. I feel like the lighting here is right behind the camera, and it just looks really flat and snapshotty. Rob Lace took this, and he says he took a portrait of these guys, the Texas Flying Legends, 
And then the next day, they asked him if he wanted to go up for a 20-minute flight. And so this was just kind of like this random cool opportunity that he fell into. I think it's an awesome shot of the situation. Like, the photographer did a great job. I just don't really know what you can do with this. I, I can't see anyone buying this and hanging it on the wall. Um, I, I don't think this is really good for stock photography or anything. Maybe it'd be good for the Texas Flying Legends website or Facebook page or whatever, but... Uh. Here's the thing, though. All that being said, and all that being said... So by... And so by so all by. that being said... Um, Working with people like Monty Isom, you could have images like this, and it's definitely good enough to suddenly get you the job where they need to throw a photographer up at a plane to get some snapshots for a movie poster or something. And this might be the image straight out of the camera, but then when you see the way they use this asset, it looks incredible, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things, it's kind of like concert photography where... If you have a lot of images like this that show that you have access and show that you have experience and show that you're capable of being in this situation, if somebody's looking to hire a photographer who can fit that bill, this is the kind of stuff that will get you work in that field. Mm -hmm. But for us photographers looking at it, we're like, eh, it doesn't have the best lighting and it's not that impressive. But sometimes impressing photographers is different than impressing the people that will eventually hire you for the job. IV gave a super chat and two bucks, and he said, here's the two points Patrick missed on the last image. It was a five star? Yeah. Do I have permission to put people in timeout for being smart asses? Uh, sure. Unless they're just talking shit about you personally, <laughs> then you have to allow that. We allow that. Uh, next up, Patrick. Next image. I'm going to guess before you pull this up, this is, is this the Netherlands? It's Tuscany, isn't it? Didn't you go there with Alaya? No, but oh, I feel like many landscape photographers go to this place. And I'm, I'm going to guess it's South like... South of France. Tuscany. South of France? Well, that's close. I mean, kind of close, right? This was taken by Jobby Sands. And he says, maybe this is titled, The Road, the well-known and famous plateau of Valensol in the south of France. Lavender fields. Yeah, lavender. I think uh, the Netherlands is the tulips. I hear a lot about the tulip uh, bubbles. Yeah. Where people like paid all this money for expensive flowers back when. Now, See? now we have the uh, Tesla bubble. The Tesla that's bubble. Just the Bitcoin bubble. Expanding. The new one's expanding. the Airbnb bubble. That's right. What I, what's what's interesting, and I I do wrestle with this, is rating this, and then comparing it to the last image. It's a, it's a big shift in gears, you know? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's kind of weird that we have pictures of planes and then pictures from, from drones. Planes, from drones, yeah. <laughs> so. I was just worried. I thought you would appreciate the aviation theme, but then I was worried it's kind of nuanced to where maybe we wouldn't get that many submissions. Yeah. I think I saw some people in the chat early before we started saying, like, this might not have been that good of a critique. I thought the pictures, the ones even we didn't choose, were amazing. Hmm. I was I picked 11 today because I felt like there were some really awesome shots in there. In fact, some of the highest rated images, like three, five, six, you know, I didn't pick the, the top 10. Well, let's rate it. Three, two, one. Three stars, three stars, four stars. I mean, uh, four. I'm not upset about a four. What do you think's going on in the bottom left and upper right? Is that an added vignette? It kind of looks like it, but... I think it I think it would suffer without that. If this had the same tonality throughout all corners of the frame. I agree. I think it would look a lot more boring. I'm I love vignettes. I love asymmetrical vignettes like this. It's almost like a gradient. Um I think the little path here is really cool. The colors are different. The it almost looks like a flower. Like if you were just to kind of look cross-eyed or not pay too much attention to the road and the tree. It almost looks like a macro shot of a flower itself, you know, the way all the lines mm -hmm. fade in there. I just think this is super unique and cool, and um, it's a very overshot location. Maybe not this specific road, but how many photographers do you see that have this shot from the ground? I think it's kind of neat to see something that I haven't seen before. I would like to just see this as a one-point perspective straight down, like an orthogonal view, Yeah. rather than the sort of oblique receding 
the view that we have here. I'm a bit nervous, though, that straight down would be so Flat. normal and boring and uniform that Maybe. it may not work. But I'd like to see it as well. All right, next up. You can give any behind the scenes of this, or is there not a whole lot? To I read at the beginning. All right, next image. This looks like uh, Arizona or something, right? This is in the U.S., I would, I would imagine, what they say. I do not know. Rob Lace took this. He says, got the chance to shoot this P-51 a few years back, strapped into a skydiving plane with feet hanging out on the slipstream. Didn't distract me from the idea that if he lurched forward 30 feet, the big old prop was going to turn us into pizza toppings all over the desert. It's a nice thought. Dude, what a that's... wild way to take a photo. What is it? What's the slipstream? What is that? That's the, the air rushing as the plane travels through it. So like when you sky, you've, have you gone skydiving? Yeah. When you're like hanging out and it's like the wind is yeah, blowing and you're just, yeah. okay. When did you go skydiving? The, I went on my eight, uh, high school graduation. Oh, okay. A long time ago. Uh, let's rate it. Three, two, one. I'm going to go four. I'm between. Oh, we all did four. I mean, yeah, this looks awesome. And when I compare this to the one with the I two planes, agree with you. this looks I much agree. better. I think the lighting is much more interesting. The angle is much more interesting. And they had a killer background. I mean, look uh -huh. at all the layers and the colors. And and... The horizon's not level here, but I think it works because mm -hmm. it's very dynamic. That's an easy fix. And even the crop of the wings, I think, uh, cool. yeah. looks nice. And I like that the the pilot isn't like doing this whole like mm. everyone yeah. in the in the plane is smiling at the camera and cocking their head to the right, you know. Yep. So you mentioned something earlier, Mike, that in this type of photography, it's kind of commonplace to have the rotors like that effect. Yeah. And is that a sh that's a shutter thing? Because if you went I, too I, yeah, fast, yeah. I, I mean, uh, a lot of that's just the way they do it, I guess. And everyone is like, you want to get as much of a a prop blur as possible, and maybe maybe you can you can get the full circle, or you can go for the thirds or something. But it seems like an easy fix in Photoshop to I mean, just that, bring that circle all the way around. Yeah. But I can imagine being in that situation. The last thing I would really I would you know maybe there's a rule. It's like one five hundredth to a thousand is the sweet spot. Well, you it's know, like one if you can handhold around one twentieth to one fiftieth or something. I think that gives you the full. It depends on how fast you're going and. The I can't even get sharp and... images at 150th on the ground. Yeah, I can't need, imagine. Need, they, they wait, gyro. one over 150th no, or one, one over 120th? Like okay. tw 20, a 20th of a second. Not What? Like, yeah. So you use a one gyro. One over 20. You ever used a big gyro? Uh, I've never used that. No, I don't think I have. And it stabilizes the camera and it keeps it relatively. That doesn't even make sense. Why would you have to shoot one twentieth of a second? What is the RPM on that? Yeah, I would have thought it was like one five hundredth was yeah. still that's fast enough. But it's fast, but not that fast. Interesting. All right, next up. Was that Rob's second image in here? Yeah, here we go. One twenty fifth to one one hundred and twenty fifth, depending on the RPM and size of the prop. Wow. So there is a. What I was gonna say is, I would just not be. I would be so in the m moment that. I gotta get the shot, I gotta get the yeah, shot. Yeah. And then you get back and you're like, oh my gosh, the props are, you know. The props aren't full circles. Yeah. Or they're just like perfectly still, and that looks weird. I cannot tell what is going on in this photo. This looks like a farm that is in the middle of being. And it just looks so much like rope on the right. That's wild. This was taken by Alan Jacoby. Jacoby? Jacoby. This is a field in three different phases. I imagine three brothers one is diligent the second one is normal and the third is on drugs <laughs> so that's this, so interesting this is kind of what you're talking about with the lavender field right just like the straight down shot yeah but this this has so much different stuff going on that uh you know i think this is way more interesting than the lavender field looking straight down that's why i wanted to see that one point perspective straight down on the lavender field to see if there was some kind of shape happening or I just, I don't think there's anything of this much interest there. Are we ready to rate this? Three, two, one. 
I'm gonna go five. Wow. Wow. I'm this is your a, favorite shot. I'm between a four or five. Again, it's tough to say what's your favorite. We just had a shoot off with you guys, and people were like, "They're so wildly different." This critique is wildly different. I mean, I tried to keep the theme consistent, but we have landscapes and we have aerial. I think this is just one of those shots that it's so simple. Maybe it's not a five, but it's super memorable in my mind. I think it's really unique. I really love the execution of this. The one thing I don't love, and maybe this is where I could be persuaded that it's like a four, is just some of the tracks, I feel like the right's a little too over the top. Maybe I want something in the middle where, you know, especially the ones on the left, the, the trailer tracks. I just wish it was look cropped like evenly into thirds. That's what bugs me about this. I kind of like the asymmetric. See, I keep thinking that, but I feel like it would lose something that if it was three equal amounts. What is this? There's like a line going down the right side. Like yeah. Black. What like is that? that? I agree. Like a hose or something? Yeah. It's a really like... cool picture, though. It's, it's one of those that's like, it seems crazy for me to give this a five because it's just so simple. But when I really, I mean, maybe, maybe this is a four, but it's still a really high rating for me to give an image like this. But the contrast and the way that it was composited, I wish we could zoom in. Uh, maybe I can here, like... Can you see like how clean the transition is there? It's not like a straight line where it's just, oh, I took this one field and this field. Like there's a lot of overlay. Wait. Is that what he's saying? I thought this was real. He found a real field like this? Oh, I thought so. Or he took three photos of three different I fields. I thought he found a field like that, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's... If he photoshopped that, I'm way less impressed. That's what I but assumed he did. But you thought it was photoshopped, yeah. and you gave it world class. Because uh, I don't think Photoshop dictates whether or not something's a four or five. I, I would imagine a five is going to have Photoshop. That's kind of the way I think of it. Yeah, have Photoshop versus completely made on a computer are two different things. But moving on. This is super cool. This reminds me of that crazy boat we just saw. The Arctic. Arctic yeah. yacht. Go big. Make it big. When, um, when are we getting that video up? Ooh. I spent a long time on it today. Um, it's got to be up before I leave for Christmas. It might need to be up sooner than that. Well, so yeah, I think I'm halfway through it. We, I mean, maybe I'm two-thirds of the way through it. We all just went to the U.S. Virgin Islands on a boat, and we saw some of the most incredible yachts. This isn't a yacht. This is like a tanker ship of some kind. But um, it was cool. And one of them, what did they? What it? What was it called on the outside? Uh, the Arctic. Arctic P. Okay. Arctic P. Yeah. And P -E it was an ex icebreaker a? converted into a luxury yacht. I thought it was the coolest thing. Jonas Gunnarsson took this negative twenty degrees Celsius and ten m slash s. What is that? Ten. 10 meters a second wind. Okay. Made it quite cold, but in the end, it was definitely worth it. So, you know, like, I want these people... Like, I usually don't care what camera shot pictures, but when it's drone stuff, I want to know what you drone, you know? Facts, yeah. Because uh, there's such a range. Have you... We've, we've driven or flown a drone in Iceland, but I don't know that it was really that cold. Might have looked cold, but it wasn't, like, minus 20 degrees yeah. Celsius. Yeah. Um, what do you do with the battery life? I mean, or especially over water. Is it the sort of thing you're like, I have five minutes to fly this? Or I don't is know. it accurate? Like, is the reading on your controller accurate when the battery's cold and it's that cold outside? Or it seems like a whole other, you know, we went to New Zealand and we had issues where uh, the, the magnetic fields down there were throwing off the navigation of the drone. Yeah. And then you fly something here and this seems like it's the Arctic or Antarctic and... You know, who knows what you're going to face. Like, new problems as a drone flyer. Yeah. Maybe maybe this could be a real helicopter. Who knows? Uh, let's rate it. Three, two, one. I'll go four. You're going five. Oh, five. This is your favorite image. Yes. This is world class. Yes. Okay. Defend I mean, yourself. This is the coolest, most interesting, no pun intended, most interesting shot so far. 
the smog, not the smog, the, what is it? The smoke coming off the water? The fog? Fog. Fog, whatever. Yeah. That crazy thing, yeah. Um, the ab it's, like, it's abstract, it looks really cold. I'm in immediately interested in what's going on here and trying to dissect this. But also, this is a subject that I love. Mm -hmm. I have photographed ships like this from above, and this is better than any of my shots. <laughs> what's up with the uh, big ice thing on the upper like, exactly, left? Exactly, there's so many questions raised by this. Doesn't it nice? look like it's sideways or something? It doesn't look like it's... It just looks like, um, like surface ice that has sort of drifted into the side of the ship. That's got to be what it is, right? Because that boat would never get in position. That just seems like you would... Engin as an engineer, you would destroy that to make it more accessible for the boat, right? But over time, it's like seeped into the frame. And I love the colors, like the teals and the blues. There's some, yeah, the greens colors are, are kind of interesting. All right, next up. Now this, I swear this image has made five critiques now. Really? It keeps sneaking in and somehow you don't remember. I've never critiqued this image. You had to have. Maybe you and David or somebody, I've never critiqued this image. Hmm. This was taken by Graham Taylor, a Tornado GR4 41R Squadron. Do you know the names of all these airplanes? No. You I know, know the I know the airplanes, but not the you know four one R Squadron RAF Coningsby. I don't know all the nitty gritty. You sure sounded like you did right there. <laughs> How can this be anything but a five? <laughs> this is incredible. Okay, so this 3. is three point six four. <laughs> this is actually interesting because I was sure that this image was shot on the ground and he just photoshopped the landing gear out and then pasted it on yeah. the sky. But he's saying here, in order to capture this image, our lighter and much slower Hawk had to enter, enter the loop first, allowing for the GR4 to catch up to us in full reheat. This gave us a very narrow and precise window in which to capture the jet vertically. At that point, the image was taken at the point that the image was taken, we are pulling around four Gs. Goodness. We then shot images all the way through the loop in order to choose the image with the most visual impact. Well, how wrong am I? I mean, not, o not only was this shot in the air, but this was shot in the middle of a loop at 4G. I mean, that's ridiculous. And if you've really seen this image before, you've probably critiqued this in the past way lower than what you're about to critique it now. Well, I do have more respect for it. I mean, it's, I love it. I love it. Anyway, I probably would have given it four stars anyway. But what now I particularly really like it. For you. What? What holds you back from giving it a five? Well, honestly, it was because I thought it was just all fake before. <laughs> but now that I realize this is real, maybe I have to give this five. I mean, maybe there could be an argument, like, the color toning seems like a little much, but that's kind of a personal thing. Like, in the, the sky, how it's super duper... Well, well again, that's our monitor. But I love seeing the, the little afterburner, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And all these cool details that make this just amazing. Like, you can see the ground, too. You see, like, yeah, you probably see it on the larger yeah. version. And but, like, all of the difficulties that had to come together to make this. All right, you've won me over, Mike. Let's do it. Three, two, one. What an <laughs> asshole. What an <laughs> asshole, Patrick. Come on. It's, 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 world, I mean, it's world class. And four Gs, that means his five pound camera weighs 20 pounds, his 20 pound head weighs 80 pounds, and he's just like fighting all of that to get it lined up. To time it right, to get it in the frame, there's a lot going on here. It's pretty awesome. This is like we had this debate. And I've seen the uh, the Ansel Adam video that we did. That is all over different subreddits, and like I'm reading comments that are not even associated with f-stoppers. You have to kind of dig to find where it's been published. And the arguments all based around like, is it important to be, you know, the first person to do something? Is it important the story that goes along with it? How difficult it is? You and I many times say it doesn't matter how difficult the photo is. It's just, is the photo, can the photo stand on its own? But this is one of those great examples where if you're in the gallery and Graham is there walking around, he's like, let me tell you about that photograph. It increases its worth tenfold yeah. when you realize it's not Photoshopped to look like this. 
I just said, you know, you could Photoshop something in one of the previous images. And here I'm making a case for no Photoshop. But I think, you know, having read the story changed all of our opinions on what to rate this. Probably $50,000 of fuel burnt to get this photo, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, next. This was taken by Jobby Sands. Had, was he already won the shot? He's been in here, yeah. Okay. He keeps sneaking in. Uh, located on the far right-hand side of Bronte Beach. A shot took with my Mavic Pro for a few months ago. Uh, Bronte Baths is still a little less popular option than its competitor over at Bondi Icebergs. Bondi. Oh, yes, Bondi. A perfect place to take a dip and cool off while relaxing at Bronte Beach. Where, where is this? Do you know? Australia. Okay. Aren't you glad you have a geography whiz with you? Yes, I need a nerd with me all the time. You need someone to follow you around at all times. Point at things at a map. I think this is really cool. I agree. Let's rate it. Three, two, one. Four stars, four stars. You went four? Yeah. I've seen this on the front of F-stoppers. I don't know if this was a photo Maybe of the day recently. that's where I recognize it. Yeah, and I saw that it's like, you know, sometimes those photos of the day definitely make me stop, stop and click on them. This was one of those images, and I was like, whoa, this is freaking cool. And then to see, like, the Olympic pool in such a precarious location, you know, know. it just, it's like a design, you know, whiz or architect. A lot of thought went into building this, you know. Yeah. It makes me also wonder what is the other location. This is the the lesser impressive one. <laughs> this this is, I think, the first one that jumps out at me as something that could be hung on a wall as art. I mean, I yeah, I, this is beautiful. Yeah, I love this. All right, next. I wonder. Uh, I wonder. I can't really. Do, can I? Lock, I don't know how to lock this. Maybe like this. Do you think it it works best vertically, or could it work better in a different? Mm. Way? I like them both. Mm. I do like that looks nice too. The colors are so great. The green I'm just trying green. to turn it, you know, on its edge. Michael sideways. Foster says too seen it too often. I mean, boring. Even that's kind of different. I mean, yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. Flip it around in every direction. Well, to us simpleton Americans, it's kind of cool. All right, next image. Now this looks fake to me. Something about the lighting looks a little funny business. Let's go full screen for the boys at home. This was taken by Rodrigo Rodriguez. What a name. Another one of my favorites from a local air show. So I did replace the sky too. I knew it. I knew it. In color grade and Photoshop, I used a mid-range lens, 55 to 300, 300 millimeters at f/5.6, one 1250th of a second. Oh, you can see he you does see. not have the full spin. It looks like the plane's gonna fall out of the sky. Mm-hmm. ISO 200, natural light, spot metering. I do, I do <laughs> like this with the sky replacement. What is on Lee's lip? We need to know. <laughs> I uh, I just got back from a jujitsu class and uh, a black belt like punched me literally punched me in the face, trying to like dive for a choke, and he punched me right in the lip and they my teeth cut up his hand and I cut up my own lip. It was, Did it was bad. affect your teeth? You guys, no. you told me you guys don't wear cups. Yeah. Do you wear mouthpieces or everything breathing is such a big yeah, part of jujitsu. Everyone does except me. But you don't wear. A I don't wear a mouthpiece. I probably should. Hmm. I, you know what's going to happen? I'm not going to wear a mouthpiece and a mouthpiece until I really hurt myself, and then I will wear one. So I should probably just start wearing one. When are you going to start getting the cauliflower ears? When I hope that, that doesn't happen. I it's think so, I've I can see it over here. What? Yeah. I don't think so. It's, you got a nice fat. No, I'm good. All right. Um, <laughs> so this is the 55 to 300 millimeter kit lens, right? Shot it. F no, 5. 55 6. to 200 is the kit lens. They don't make a 55 to... Th 
I mean, maybe they do make a 55. I thought that was like the, the bigger upgrade you could get. Yeah, maybe the 18 to 200 is the normal kit lens, but the 55 300 is the. Well, the 18 to 200 was like the all in one. Like, I remember telling people if you want to travel and want one lens, that's the, the one to get. But you had the 18 to 55, the 55 to 200, and maybe it was the 70 to 300. Hmm. But all I'm trying to say is, if that is a kit lens, look how incredible of an image you still can take with something that's not. You know, we we I had a 70 to 200 mm. on this trip to the uh, Virgin Islands. It was back focusing like crazy, and I don't know if that was the camera or the lens. It needs to be calibrated. But Mike noticed it too. Hmm. He took an image of a house like way up on a cliff, and you said it was like super blurry and out of focus. And we should there. do tests on that lens before it ruins more photos. All right, next. Well, we never made it. This. Oh, Slow down, boy. Right. Goodness. Well, what are we doing? So quick to get through this, huh? Three, two, one. Two? Needs a little work. Really? Come on, Mike. Shutter speed. Come on, Mike. What? You can't shoot at 1 20th of a second from ground. You just hold it really steady. You need a gyro on the ground, Lee. That's not. I love work. the color toning. I love the processing. But the prop not being blurred makes it look like it's going to fall out of the sky. I would just I would just blur that in Photoshop. I bet that's what people do. Because they want the plane to be sharp, and then they add the blur. Did you guys see the movie The Rocketeer? Yes. Years ago. Yeah. Decades. Dec dec yeah, it came out decades ago. But this, for some reason, this reminds me of that. I don't know why. It's nothing the photographer could do, but... See, I, my eye goes to the one wheel. I know that's like a permanently fixed yeah, you, wheel you in the back. You probably but... wouldn't want to mess with the airplane, but I, I agree. That. It looks strange. All right. And I believe this is the last photo here. And before you read anything, this also feels kind of fake to me, but I don't know what it looks like up, up above the clouds shooting planes this close, so maybe this is what it looks like, but... Let's see, Greg DeSatov took this. This is the original plane that stunt pilot Paul blah, blah, blah used before he built his second plane, the Extra 330 SE. What? I was asked to do these promo shots, and we ended up with perfect weather for the shoot. Paul flew the newer stunt plane while his partner flew this older aircraft. I have a fear of heights, so it was challenging not only to get up in the air, but also shoot through an open door. Wow. Uh, I was so glad I did that as I got some amazing shots. Here's a behind-the-scenes video. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, if you guys want to see the behind-the-scenes video, go to fstoppers.com slash contest right now. You can submit images to the next one and check out older ones like this as well. Isn't it wild how hyper-real and crazy images can look above the cloud line? And yeah. Like, none of us shoot this kind of stuff. Have you done anything in the air? I mean, I know you shoot down from helicopters and stuff, but have you done any, like, what is this called, like, plane, plane to plane? Or plane. Air to air. Air to air. You can, I've not done it, like, in this little small plane environment. You can do it at a few airports around the country, and you can kind of get next to, like, commercial jets taking off if you can sneak in there with air traffic control, which is pretty fun. And what is that? You're just taking off in a small plane next to a large plane? You can, you can be in a helicopter and hover it next to the runway and get jets going past you. Okay. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty wild. All right, we ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Solid fours across the board. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know if this is the most exciting airplane or anything, but I feel like this is, the lighting is so perfect and the background is so perfect. It's just for this plane and for the job that this guy was hired to do, it's perfect. Yeah. I think it's a great shot. It's, it's It looks like a catalog photo. Yeah. Like the cover of Flying Magazine or yeah. the the extra, what is it? Yeah, an extra 330. It would be like on, it, like the pits makes it, right? It would be on the cover of their catalog or something. It's a little more specific than I can give, but um, yeah, if you had like a model airplane that you had to put together, this would be the cover shot on the... On the model, on the on rebel, the yeah, rebel on the, box. Yeah, yeah. All right, Mike. It is now up to you to choose two random winners to receive a free tutorial from fstoppers.com/store. And anyone who might be interested, everything 
uh, all of the F-Stoppers tutorials in the store are currently on sale. You get 30% off of one and has the next tutorial officially come out? I just saw an email. It's been out for the people in the know, but I believe it comes out Monday officially. So if you win and you wait five days. Okay, this is inside info. It's, like, it's a fashion-based tutorial, so I don't know if any of these guys are going to want that one. But you would hope that they would want the one of the no, no, guy I'm not saying sitting that. right here. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Like, obviously, everybody wants the Where Are Meets Architecture series. But I'm saying anybody who's watching this live critique right now, yeah. if you wait until Monday when this new tutorial that we filmed comes out, this is the first time ever that we're releasing a tutorial while a sale's going on. Oh, okay. And we're including it in a sale. So if you're on the fence about, ah, maybe you want to buy something, the more you buy, the more you save. So one, 30% off, two, 40, 50, and then 60% off if you buy four or more. You can actually get the new tutorial on sale because we're running and a sale and everything. everything else in your cart. Yeah. You're such a nice guy, Lee. You're like giving them the, yeah. the little bonus tip Incredible there. Incredible human being. Really? Yeah. You can also get photographing yeah. the world, though, if you enjoy the landscape stuff more. Alaya Licardi is an incredible instructor. If so, that being said, why don't you pick your two random winners here? Are they, do we pick numbers? They're or? not random. They're you're you're picking your. You pick, and you have to have a reason to give it. Okay, I'm gonna give it to the guy who took the photo in the daytime of the Mustang and the F4. Speak in English. Go up. Go up, right there, top left, that one. Okay, so this shot by Rob Lace. Patrick, you have to pull it up so everyone can see it. Um, I can just scroll back. It's like the second image we did. There we go. All right, so why are you giving this is a winner. Rob Lace a tutorial? Because he seems like a great guy, and I want him to get some tutorials. I loved what he wrote and how excited he was about it. Okay, and who else? And Jonas... Gunnarsson. Oh, uh, your favorite Gunnarsson. image of the oh, entire yeah, critique? Yeah, my favorite image of the entire critique. Okay. Guys, send me a private message on fstoppers.com. And sorry, guys, I, I do realize that I've gotten a couple private messages from the last one. I haven't given you your tutorials. I will do that ASAP. Uh, I think Jonas should reach out to Mike Kelly and give him a couple tips on how to I improve agree. his own. That's an, such an incredible picture. All right, guys. Well, I think that wraps up this critique. Um, maybe we will do one more. We're definitely going to do another critique while you're still here. Okay. The thing, the funny thing is, Mike might be here longer than you and I are here. Yeah, you were you were saying today, like if we leave on the twenty second, you and your girlfriend aren't doing Christmas with family. No. So well, you can just have this a whole house. We locked down in California, and I'm like, why? go back right now there's you nothing to do you could stay in puerto rico where you're eating the greatest foods and sailing the ocean yeah or you could go back to los angeles where the stay at home order is in effect and you will become the biggest <sighs> simp of them all <laughs> all right guys uh again fstoppers.com slash store for the tutorials fstoppers.com slash contest for the next critique we will see you soon Up. Not to try. <laughs>